Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new Attack on Show. I'm your host, Rob E., and I've got return attacker Harley Wallen and CEO, fellow co of the Access Harleywood. Welcome. Thank you. Thank welcome. You, thank you. I'm proud to have you here because you've got a very uh, important movie that you guys are starting to work on, Finding Nicole. Uh, and you're going to be directing this film, correct? Yeah. And did you, uh, and also co writer? You know what? I have credit as a co writer, but, uh, but I'd say I was involved in the storytelling from a big picture. I was kind of pushing Jeff yeah, <laughs> into Jeff doing it, yes, in a certain way, which I, uh, you know, I, I gotta say, man, holy smokes, what a script he turned out. It's, uh, I mean, it's flat out amazing. It's the kind of script that takes your breath away when you read it uh, and uh, and you know Katie when she wrote it she was crying yeah. so this was a very very powerful story but what I what I really love about this is that it's um, I love making films that that poke at moral issues that, that that grab at things that we care about but this is a true story so it's a big big difference we're talking about someone's actual life mm -hmm. and we're talking about someone that dealt with you know just tremendous uh, heartbreak and, and and pain to get to the other side of things uh, and uh, and and being a warrior and a fighter to get there is just amazing and uh, wait till you see the the film it's 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 a story of a lifetime no I, I'm very excited to see the outcome it's now that the story uh, it follows Nicole Beverly uh, who's a survivor of domestic violence yeah uh, and her story spans over so many years yeah. Uh, was it difficult, I guess, formulating that story? Because I'm, obviously you can only fit so much in a film. How was yeah. that process for you getting that completed? I'll be honest and say it was a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, when she sent me the original court documents for everything that she had gone through, uh, I looked at it and I, in all honesty, I looked at this and said, if I had a full TV series season, I don't mm. even know how, it, how I would get all this in. So it was, it was stressful. And, and when I talked to Jeff, uh, we were talking about like, what are the key points mm -hmm. uh, of, 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 of the storytelling that we need in there? So we, 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 it took us a long time to weed through and figure it out. And, and, and uh, he was quite a trooper. I, I honestly don't even know how he came up with it the way he did. Because this is a story that it, it needs to be told a certain way for it to really... Uh, ring true. I think that that's a, a key thing that a lot of people don't understand. When you get stuck in a, a domestic violence or domestic abuse this way, it, 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 people would just say, "Well, just get out." Right. Uh, and, and 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 wouldn't we wish it was that simple and and that easy to do? Uh, but but this touches on all those things, the support system around you and everything that you need in order to step out uh, uh, and, and, and leave a, a situation like this. And, uh, and that's, I think, one of the more powerful things that we're doing with this yeah. is trying to create systematic change as well, uh, with whether it's the police uh, and, and their interactions or the, or the judicial system and their interaction. There are still things to this day that we can do to make oh, for this sure. better. Yes. No, and, and that's a, a tricky part. I mean, when, when you're dealing with this type of story and, and then you're condensing it down and then also creating a narrative, I think, for people to, to follow. Because the story, mm -hmm. I mean, Nicole's a powerful person. Yeah. So to capture all that and the, the story is out there. So then to also now kind of reformulate this to show people the, the details, I think, is that's the things that, mm -hmm. and hearing her speak, just how she changes, how she has to park her vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, the, the steps of oh, precautions terrifying. that she takes, but it just becomes kind of the, the norm. And it, I, you know, it's eye-opening like that to see how that can just change the way somebody has to live their life well, forever. And think about this, you know, with, with this COVID-19 thing happening right now, uh, they have been releasing some prisoners so that they don't get, you know, infected and die in, in jail yeah. and in prison, which I get. But at the same time, I mean, imagine someone like him getting out and someone like him deciding that he's going to fulfill his destiny or whatever it may be at this point uh it, it's terrifying and to live with that all the time and to never know when somebody's going to say you know we're gonna we're gonna let you on good behavior or what like any of these crazy things that can happen and he's still appealing uh, right so so it's not over uh 
it's it's a scary scary thing no and that and that i think i was talking to jeff about that that this case is still evolving so i you know i mm -hmm. think it's something that you know the movie's gonna pr have to stay up to date with that yeah um the story here I, i'm excited to, to have you guys tell this story uh for the idea of that you, you see a lot of inspired by true stories but you mm -hmm. guys are working very closely with nicole yeah um and i don't think this is just going to be an inspired by you guys are going to tell a, a true story with this i imagine is that is that correct yeah. for you guys as far as how you're going to approach this yeah I, 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 and i don't know uh i know you spoke to jeff and i always spoke to nicole uh but but i'm but i'm going to share a thing the reason why i think that we were all um chosen for some destiny above us to be a part of this uh, is that I remember when I heard about this story, uh, Bill Debreff, uh, who's my lo lawyer, uh, also works with Nicole, and uh, and he connected us through this. And at the time, he didn't know. I grew up in a household of domestic violence and domestic abuse. I grew up as the kid who tried to get in between to try to stop things, okay. that tried to fix things. And I was the one with the craziness around me, uh, and 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 so I think that's why I was chosen, so to speak, to 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 make the film. And, and when I thought about who was going to write this for me, I know a lot of really good writers, and I, I'm an all right writer myself. And I kept thinking, and I don't know why I met this guy Jeff at a big festival in Ohio, and and he, and he, what he was saying just clicked with me, and I really liked him. Uh, and I felt like he's probably too expensive for me, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I, I just really wanted to work with him. And I just, no, nothing came up and we talked for a year. And then uh, suddenly this drops in my lap and I don't know why. I'm like, I gotta talk to Jeff about this. Yeah. So I talk to Jeff, we sit down and I'm, I'm trying to sell him on why this is a great thing to get a part of. And I try to tell him why this is something we gotta be passionate about. And he's sitting there quiet the whole time. And I just, I'm trying to add something to this to make it worthwhile. Like, is this working? And he's kind of like glazed over. And I'm like, what's going on? Same background. Wow. So, so Nicole has two, two sons. And, and I think we, I think we get to give them a bit of a voice. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, I think we get to, to speak on their behalf a little bit so that it, it's absolutely Nicole's story. But because of me and Jeff and everything that we went through, we give that a voice too. And I keep thinking to myself with Katie, you know, it's really funny too, uh, because Bill immediately, he was like, before this even happened, he was like, oh my God, Katie would be so perfect to play this. And, 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 and I know she's very flattered by that. But at the same time, this is a scary thing. This mm -hmm. is a big, these are some big shoes to step into and fill. Yeah. And you have to portray what happened, what actually happened to this woman and to this family. And it's so... I mean, it's so impactful. It's amazing. No, it definitely seems that, you know, that's a personal impact it has on you. What kind of impact do you hope this has on the viewers when they come and see? You know what? Um, I generally want to, to kind of get people to want to create some kind of action and to create some kind of change uh, or at least self-examine themselves. Uh, I remember making Betrayed and I wanted people to realize that trafficking is happening. Human trafficking is right in your backyard and it's at your daughter's school. It's at your uh, son's daycare. It's everywhere. And you gotta be vigilant and we have to fight for our loved ones. Uh, and then I've had a bunch of other ones where it's more of a moral question to yourself, like what side of the fence are you on? Where mm -hmm. do you take your stands? With this one, I really want to create systematic change, but I also want to create a platform and a voice more so for Nicole. She's already out there at schools talking uh, to young girls so that they see the flags, the red flags before, uh, and so that the young boys can say, whoa, that sounds, sounds a little bit like me. I have some of those tendencies. And maybe they can go, I need to help. I need to do something. I need to fight my demons. And mm -hmm. I need somebody next to me to help me be a better man. Um, no, that's important because, yes, you, yeah. you do hear as far as noticing signs of somebody else being that way. But finding it in yourself is even, a, I think, a tougher situation to, mm -hmm. to do. So hopefully this does open those eyes. How, how is this project, I mean, how, how has this been different from your other projects that you've worked on here as far as the approach of this story? Well, it's, 
you know, Katie keeps saying how scary it is to play Nicole. And it, it, to me, it's the same thing. Uh, to do this justice becomes, you know, so much more important when it's when it's all real. Um, I think that's a big part of it, is to make sure that we do this story justice, to make sure that that nobody looks at it and goes, ah, you know, should have just left mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, any of those things that's so easy to say. Because I remember hearing that growing up, um, people would be saying, you know, why didn't she just leave if, if it was that bad? And it's, I wish people would understand that it's not that simple, no. but also that we can maybe take a step backwards and say, how do we prevent things? Because right. we, we, we're, even in this mess now with, with the, 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 we just had a terrible uh, thing happen in Minnesota. A, a man is, is, is dead uh, and, and, and now there's unrest and, and, and we, go, we keep doing this crazy cycle. And I, I want to I pull all the way back and say, where, how can we fix this? Right. Uh, so go to the root of the cause because I think that's the, the key and I think this story we, we truly try to start at falling in love mm. and what that looks like and going all the way through to where we are in this crazy court process today and and how much that means uh, no and, and that, yeah. that's a that's a tricky part of the story when you when you review it is that um, they were married and things were fine for years and then it starts to change mm -hmm. and you know you might be in a good relationship that could yeah. turn and then by then you're so deep involved that you don't recognize the signs yeah. so it's not not as if these domestic violence relationships always just start right from the beginning that they could take time mm -hmm. and, and then happen later on in a relationship so it's always yeah. something you want to be conscious of aware yeah. of to recognize yeah no i think that's definitely uh, a, a big part of this but I do think that people who behave a certain way are that way mm. and I think they groom you a certain way and they do things a certain way uh, to break you down to make sure that you think that that if it wasn't for them that you would be nowhere and have nothing right and that you have to hang on to them for everything that you have a predatory mindset that's that takes exactly the time it. Years. yeah no uh, I, I I'm Excited to see the story come to fruition for you guys and see this develop and end up on the big screen because I think it's a very important story yeah. and I know you will do it justice. Uh, I will keep everybody posted here on Attack on Show as far as updates when this is coming out. I'm not letting Harley go anywhere. He's going to have to tell me all the inside juicy stuff on this so we can get you the information. That's but right. Harley, thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Everybody, this is Attack on Show. I'm your host, Robbie Harley Wallen. Thank you for watching.